So in, in the boilers that I worked on, we did not consider the hard facing. And the reason is, is for the specific application, um, the units that I worked on were uh, high ash coals and um, extremely abrasive ash. And the, um, the hard surfacing creates a ir irregular uh, pattern as far as uh, smoothness, if you will, and then that sets up little little locations for eddies. Um, there were areas in some of the bores that I worked on that were hard faced, and uh, we would go in every year and actually remove that hard facing based off of uh, priority because it was starting to gouge into the uh, tubes. When you start doing pressure pot replacement and, and circulating fluidized bed boilers. You run into all kinds of issues because you have to do tube alignment. Um, you there are certain procedures that should be used. Um, you um, if the if the tube alignment is not done correctly, you're going to end up with erosion or gouging issues for the for the rest of the life of those pressure parts. That's like extremely difficult to fix. The most recent facility that I was at was a was a. Uh, was a biomass unit. We burned 100% sorted construction and demolition debris. Uh, very challenging, very challenging environment. Um, we uh, we had not only an, a, an erosion issue in the uh, combustor, uh, but we also had a, uh, a corrosion aspect to that. Um, <clears throat> and so we had really a corrosion erosion mechanism going on there. Um, and it was not only affecting small, the typical small areas uh, around the refractory, you know, the refractory tube interface, cyclone inlets, um, <clears throat> and, 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 and those specific areas, we were seeing tube wastage over large areas of the, of the uh, uh, unit. So we had, a, we had a very large area that we had to protect. Um, and uh, in, in, in doing that, um, you know, the approach, the approach really became to prevent us having the, to get to the point where we had to do large panel replacements. Um, and, you know, to your point of the outage cost, um, you know, when you were looking at tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars a day in terms of lost production. Uh, you know, your point is very well taken in that, in that the, the, uh, um, the actual cost of the maintenance, the actual cost of the application, the actual cost of the labor is really small in comparison to the lost production costs. So anywhere you can anywhere you can shave a day on the outage, uh, even if it costs more to put to, to 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 shave that outage time down, there's a there's a no brainer uh, cost return. Um, you know when you look at when you look at the the operational you know the operational savings and the and the uh, cost of, uh, uh, of of lost lost production time. My first, my very early CFB experience was at Gladfelder in, in Spring Grove. Um, and that unit was put in in 89, 90. So that was one of the early CFBs. And, you know, that was back in the days when nobody knew, we didn't know what we didn't know. You know, they were learning as they were going with these units. And so we had, uh, and this was actually before I got involved um, in the utility department out there, but they had uh, they were having tube leaks at the interface between the refractory and the and the and the tube, and uh, you know which is common. You get that eddy, you get the erosion, you end up with tube leaks. So they weld overlaid it about two or three feet up from the refractory up. They just did weld overlay the whole way around, man manual weld overlay. But they didn't do any grinding or blending. So, you know, what that led to was, you know, more tube leaks. The thermal spray application, if done right and evaluated and looked at holistically, enables you to put together a long range plan. So you can, you can evaluate what areas you need, uh, 
coverage on, what areas you need protection, and how long that's going to last, and map that out over a long period of time. So you can levelize your maintenance spend over time, as opposed to letting the unit get to a point where you need to do a significant amount of work, tearing out panels, um, and and having a large capital spend uh, and an extended outage duration in in uh, uh, at at various intervals in the uh, um, you know in the life of the unit. So the 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 decision was made purely on budget, um, and it didn't include some of the un intangibles, right? Like um, like history of the unit. Um, having um, a knowledgeable people that have worked on similar units um, at different facilities with different companies. And the, the biggest difference was really the quality control. So as I mentioned before, we had a very, very, um, a very unique specification. We had actually, you know, multiple specifications. So different areas that got different um, uh, thicknesses sprayed on. And the the other the other contractor did not have the capability or the knowledge to perform the appropriate quality control measures, and so um, myself and uh, two other individuals had to perform that function ourselves. So we found ourselves working um, crossing over multiple shifts, um, extremely long days, and then. Since they didn't have a QA, a, a proper QA pr process for our application, uh, the outage, the, uh, the the thermal spray time was increased, mainly because they had to go back and make repairs, remove material, and then reinstall. And then we would we would go back, we would Q, we we do perform the quality control checks. Um, it, it made life very miserable for us for that outage. Even though on paper we say we saved a few nickels, um, I, I believe that we got an inferior product. I know one of the, the big issues we had was actually project management. It, it, it seemed like the project manager had no clue of what was going on inside the boiler. He spent a, a crazy amount of time inside the uh, office trailer, um, and I was providing updates, and it just it didn't make it seemed like it didn't make any sense to him. Um, you know, it ended up being an ultra frustrating uh, project for myself and the team. I've looked at a lot of other companies. Uh, we installed um, at another at one of the facilities I worked at. We installed a uh, panel that had a competitor's shop sprayed application on it. A month later, we had a tube failure, not in that area, but when I went over to do the inspection, that cladding was entirely gone, 100%. Like you couldn't even tell that it had, it had been flame to that it had been um, thermally sprayed at all, so that that material obviously did not work. The other is just the quality. Um, there, there's nothing worse on the planet than installing. You you want a twenty say you want a twenty mil spec. You go in, you do your inspection, and it's it's five mils. But there's nothing worse than that. And then now you're having to move resources back to an area to get it sprayed up to thickness. And then what will usually happen um, is they'll actually overspray it. So then it'll be too thick. And now you have to remove material. So you just end up chasing your tail um, a lot on, on, on the quality.